Excellent. AMD Ryzen Infinity Fabric ticks at memory speed. That's kind of the focus of this video, but if you don't believe me, check out the tech power-up article that I have referenced right here. This was actually revealed about a month ago by Robert Halleck over at uh, AMD. And among the different potential culprits for explaining some of Ryzen's lack of performance in very specific GP uh, CPU limited situations with gaming, this has become one of the prime suspects. So, uh, there's other things that might have affected it, and I wanna address those really quickly. For instance, uh, game support in general, and that was just proven, for instance, with the Ashes of the Singularity update, which provided about a 30% improvement uh, with a Ryzen CPU in certain situations. Uh, we've also had potentials for Windows updates that might cause some improvements as well. But in my opinion, when you look at overall improving the performance of Ryzen across the board, it seems like memory speed is actually one of the things that's a pretty significant factor. So to that end, we have a new kit of memory he here from G-Skill. This is the Flare X and it's designed very specifically for AMD Ryzen platforms. This is a 3200 speed kit. Cast latency is 14, 14, 14, 14, 34 to be specific, and it's a 1.35 volt kit. Now before I dive into actually installing this on my test bed and doing some testing, I did do a bit of research, so I wanted to reference that, and of course links to all this stuff is down in the description below. First off, of course, just the revelation that Infinity Fabric does tick at memory speed. Infinity Fabric, put simply, is the interconnect, the communication layer that's in between the different parts of a Ryzen processor. Specifically, it handles the interchange of information between the two CCX units, units that exist in, say, a Ryzen 17 or Ryzen 1800X processor. The theory is that latency between those, those CCX units and a Ryzen processor is what is causing some of the slowdown, specifically, again, in CPU-limited gaming situations like gaming at 1080. But there has been a lot of uh, testing and updates and stuff like like that in the interim. So uh, I have a couple legit reviews articles listed here. These were posted by Nathan. Uh, he actually went over what is the best DDR4 clock speed for AM4 and to sum up his, his article, 3200 was kind of where he found the sweet spot was. You're not gonna pay as much as you do for a 3200 kit as you would paying for like a premium kit like a 4000 speed, which are still a lot more rare. Um, so you can get a good amount of price to performance and you do get, according to him, uh, something in the range of a 16% performance boost in the 1080p gaming and about a 50% import performance improvement in memory bandwidth tests, which are more synthetic, but you can see that there is a pretty significant difference. He also did a more recent article um, discussing single rank versus dual rank DDR4 memory performance. And this is another reason why you might consider getting a kit like this uh, Flarex kit from G-Skill is that single rank and, and, and dual rank memory configurations hasn't been a thing that's been discussed for quite some time. It just hasn't really had an effect. But with Ryzen, which seems to be a bit more particular about the memory speeds and even more specifically the memory uh, modules that are on each memory stick, uh, it does seem like single rank is the way to go. And that is what you, I believe, will be guaranteed to get with the G-Skill kit. They're not saying specifically, but I feel like if they're, if they're doing what they know how to do as G-Skill, they're probably giving you uh, Samsung ICs, which are uh, have been shown to be more stable with Ryzen and also single rank kits. Uh, as far as we can tell, again, all we know from the uh, packaging is that this is DDR4 3200, cast latency of course of 14, and then they specifically say it uses high performance integrated circuits screened specifically for the AMD platform. So uh, I have to assume that means it's, it's gonna be Samsung single rank stuff. And again, jumping back to Nathan's article here, uh, he found that especially when overclocking, uh, going a single rank to dim configuration is gonna get you much uh, higher speeds that are possible, as well as a, a better performance overall. Also bear in mind that again, a two kit configuration is probably gonna be a little bit more stable at this point in time. We're waiting on additional uh, motherboard BIOS updates, uh, more validation from the memory manufacturers themselves, but Right out of the gate, this seems to be a good option uh, for anyone who's looking for a bit of a boost in performance with their Ryzen uh, setup, as well as hopefully improved gaming performance. Um, here is another uh, video that has actually kind of taken off just recently. This is from Mind Blank Tech, uh, who's uh, got about 8,000 subscribers on YouTube right now, but a very well, well done video where he actually got 
a 1700X up and running uh, at 3600 speed. So 1803.9 or so uh, times two is uh, what would actually equal the memory speed. He was also running at about four gigahertz. Um, and he found through a bunch of tests, and again, I'll link this in the description so you guys can check them all out. Uh, I also like his, his overlays. Um, he found some significant performance improvements depending on the game that you're playing. And uh, even in some situations, uh, like here with Mafia 3, uh, the 1700X actually jumps ahead of the 7700K. Of course, there's lots of other uh, specifics when it comes to his testing configurations that are pointed out in the video. So again, I encourage you guys to check that out if you want to. Uh, and then finally, uh, I found XBNPC, a fairly small YouTube channel, but um, does lots of videos on uh, well, Ryzen recently, and he actually has this specific kit of RAM, and he was able to do uh, BCLK overclock and run it at uh, 3400, I believe, was what he was actually running it, running it at, or 3466 or so um, was what he had. So he also goes through very specifically all of his configurations in the BIOS and everything like that. I don't think I'm going to be going specifically for the 3467 uh, setup that he had with a base clock of uh, 118.2. If nothing else, I'm going to go for the uh, straight out of the box 3200 speed settings that most people can dial in pretty quickly. And then I will be testing that against uh, my existing 2933 benchmarks. Or no, I need to redo my 2933 settings benchmarks with the 1070 uh, and the 1700X. And this is, of course, all leading up to further preparation for my Ryzen 5 video, which um, should be coming out, uh, the Ryzen 5's on top, which should be coming out very, very soon, like really soon. Can't tell you exactly when, but Ryzen 5 launches on April 11th, so um, that's maybe a little bit of a hint for you guys. My test bed over here, though, uh, is basically the same system that I was using for my Ryzen 7 overclocking video. Uh, it is the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero, and I'm going to be using the latest uh, BIOS version that's available from them. I have a Corsair H100 IV2 for the CPU cooler. Uh, 1700, Ryzen 7 1700 is the CPU that's in there. Uh, I have a GTX 1070 from Galax here. I'll also be running overclocked. Uh, the operating system and games are on a Patriot Hellfire M.2 480 gig SSD, which is an NVMS, NVMe SSD that's very fast. Uh, everything's powered by Corsair HX 1000i power supply. And then of course the memory is gonna be my Flare X kit here from G-Skill, 3200 speed memory. I'm gonna get this installed. I'm gonna kinda of go through and do some testing, whatever. I'll come back and tell you guys what I've settled on as far as my testing goes, uh, and then we'll do some benchmarks and some closing thoughts. So I actually decided pretty quickly that I was not gonna do the expanded memory overclock. I was gonna settle with 3200 speed, versus 2933 speed. So remember 2933 is already a bit of an overclock uh, out of the box for Ryzen memory and not everyone has been able to hit it. So I'm not doing the uh, wider gaps of comparisons that you would see with like a 2133 speed DDR4 memory kit versus something like 3200. But I started by getting the latest version of the Ryzen Master Utility as well as my other monitoring utilities like CPU-Z and then I updated uh, the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard to the latest version of the BIOS which was released just March 24th, it's version 1002 in case you are curious. So I should also have the latest microcode updates uh, for the Ryzen CPU in there as well which is of course the 1700. Uh, I did also install the balanced power plan that's optimized for AMD Ryzen processors. This was just recently published on the uh, AMD Ryzen community website, uh, which has a specific power plan that's tailored for Ryzen CPUs. That's not available in Windows 10 when you first load it up, so you do need to do an extra step to get this, but I'm trying to give this setup the best possible chance at getting some good scores, so I decided to go with that as well. From there I moved on into overclocking, uh, and this was actually pretty much the same overclock I had on my 1700 when I did my overclocking video a few weeks back, but it's at 3.9 gigahertz. It's running about 1.35 volts, and that's via a plus 0.075 volt offset uh, using the ASUS UEFI configuration. And then for the baseline test, the memory is running at DDR4 2933 uh, with cast latency of 16, 16, 16, 39, which is not the tightest timings, um, but it is what it runs at out of the box if you just plug in 2933. And again, it's just for the baseline. Now, uh, after that, I've ran some tests, of course, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but then I overclocked the memory. Uh, just using the UEFI, I was able to just basically plug in the same uh, cast latency values and frequency that are listed on the Flare X kit. So 3200 speed, 
14, 14, 14, 34 uh, was the timings. Unfortunately, everything was pretty much rock solid after I dialed that in. And from there, I was able to do some benchmark tests. I started out with the Asus ROG Real Bench, which is sort of a real world test, it runs through multiple tests. My baseline test scored 145,850, and with the memory overclocked, I got up to 148,672. Next up, I did the IDA64 memory bandwidth test. This is definitely a synthetic test. It's purely testing raw memory bandwidth, bandwidth speed, read, write, copy, and latency. And um, since there's some very specific numbers here, I'm just gonna show these to you guys right side by side. Don't pay too much attention to the cache because that won't be affected by my memory overclock. That top line for the memory is what you wanna look at. And definitely a nice improvement in latency uh, as well as the overall scores. Next up, I did some gaming benchmarks. I started with GTA 5, uh, which is where I saw some definite disparity between KB Lake and Ryzen when I did my initial tests running at 1080. Uh, here, I got 122 frames per second average uh, with the memory at 2933. Bumping the memory up, memory up to 3200 got me up to 125 frames per second average. It seems fairly minor, but that is an improvement and it was repeatable. So we're definitely seeing at least a percentage increase with the higher memory speed here. Next, I went for For Honor and I really ran this test because it's a new one and it's got a nice can benchmark. And so I just threw it in there before actually double checking some other people's results. But For Honor is one of those games that's really just not showing much difference between Ryzen and KB Lake. So uh, as a result, improving my memory speed really got me the same results overall. And that just goes to show that the 1080 performance deficit that you're seeing in some situations with Ryzen is not across the board. You have to be CPU limited. Uh, For Honor is not a game that's CPU limited even at 1080, so the results were pretty much the same. Finally, I popped in Ashes of the Singularity. It had a recent update, so I wanted to test it. I'm not testing against the old version of Ashes, but I am testing in DirectX 12 mode at 1080 with the Extreme Profile. And here I got 67.7 average frames per second with the memory overclock. That's compared to 63.1 average frames per second that I got without that memory overclock. So that was a pretty significant improvement and definitely the most pronounced of all of the tests that I ran. So just to wrap things up and run down the results, and remember here I'm testing 2933 versus 3200, not 2133 versus 3200. These are pretty close in actual memory speed, but in real, be real bench, I saw a 2% overall score improvement. It's pretty small, but definitely something. Ida64 saw 8.3% faster reads, 9.1% faster writes, 10% faster copy uh, score, and 16% reduced latency. And I think that reduced latency is a pretty key factor when it comes to uh, performance improvements, particularly with gaming. In GTA 5, I had a 1.6% better overall frame rate. So again, pretty minor, but definitely uh, measurable. In For Honor, again, there was no change, so not really much to speak of there. And then in Ashes of the Singularity, I had a 7.3% better average frame rate and a 7.5% better average CPU frame rate. So there again, very pronounced improved scores. And I would love to see how this could do going even beyond that, like pushing it up to like 3400 or 3500 or something like that. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time very quickly because the Ryzen 5 launch is right around the corner. So I'm gonna have to cut these uh, tests off here and hopefully come back to this in the future. So there you go guys, pretty clear evidence in my opinion that memory speed is a significant factor when it comes to the overall performance of your Ryzen based system. That is not to say that it is the end all be all of course. I have done plenty of tests already at lower memory speeds that have shown Ryzen performing very well. It just depends what you're doing. In CPU limited gaming situations though, which is kind of the point of contention for most people right now when it comes to Ryzen, especially if you're talking about Ryzen versus Intel KB Lake or something like that, memory speed matters. And it's definitely very nice to have the availability of the G-Skill Flare X kit so that you know you have a validated and tested kit that can run at those higher speeds that will pretty much out of the box work with your Ryzen setup. But that's not all for this video because I have a lot more testing still to do because Ryzen 5 again is just right around the corner. So guys, if you're interested in my Ryzen 5 testing, which I have lots of plans for, uh, definitely hit the subscribe button and get subscribed to my channel because that's coming really soon. Also hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and let me know. Comments down in the comment section are also always appreciated. And uh, check out links as well down there for uh, links to my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and help support my channel. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.